I invite you to turn again to Luke 6, and we're going to finish the scripture reading. I want you to know that both this scripture reading uh, and the focus for today was chosen long before I was contacted by Matsiko. But I believe God has an important message in what is here. Luke 6, beginning with verse 37. Do not judge, and you will not be Do not condemn, and you will not be. Forgive, and you will be. Give, and it will be a good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, running over will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. He also told them a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully qualified will be like the teacher. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own? Or how long can you say to your neighbor, friend, let me take out the speck in your eye, when you yourself do not see the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit, for each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person, out of the good treasure of the heart, produces good And the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. This is the word of God for the people of God. And we say, thanks be to God. I actually want to begin by encouraging you to back up a little bit to Luke 6, starting with verse 20. And I want you to notice that in Luke's gospel, Jesus, in verse 12, has just chosen his 12 disciples. He has literally just picked those into whom he will pour his life and his ministry. And one of the first lessons that Jesus teaches those who seek to follow him is, my ways are not the ways of this world. Touch your neighbor and say, God's way is not the world's way. And we repeat these sayings from this Luke passage in a rote way as if they have no radical implications at all. When Jesus tells his disciples in one of his first teachings, if they strike you on the cheek, what are you called to do? Turn and give them the other. If they condemn you, if they judge you, if they cast you out, you are to reject them, walk away, protect your heart, and never serve them. No. What does Jesus say? You are to love them. You are to forgive them. You are to walk with In verse 20, this is Luke's version of the Beatitudes. We often read Jesus' words on the Beatitude from the Gospel of Matthew because it's a little bit more elaborate. But the primary message that Jesus is imparting to his disciples in verse 20, he looked up at his newly chosen disciples and he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. I confess to you that it wasn't until I studied the Beatitudes in the Gospel of Luke that I began to understand more deeply what Jesus is doing. Because then he goes on to talk about loving your enemies and doing good to those who hate you and blessing those who curse you. 
Jesus is turning relationships upside down. If your question is, what should you do to your enemy? You're not going to like Jesus' answer. If your question is, whom should you love? He has a radical response to what you thought you already knew. In addition, Jesus uses this word, blessing. I was reading a commentary in preparation for today, and the author of this commentary said, we in the church have abdicated, given away, lost sight of the power of blessing. And he says, when God blesses, God speaks favor and love over us. And if God is our parent, what deeper blessing is there? than to know that the place you begin was a place of blessing. But you don't need me up here to tell you that there are many who have not felt blessed in that first family of origin. Individuals who are without father or mother that they know. Some taken by disease, by injustice, by poverty. Name what you want by selfishness. And God's first response is, blessed are the poor. Because my blessing, God says, counts. Because my favor is the deepest favor of all. Because my love poured out over you matters. When I was just beginning to explore a call to ministry, I read a book by Gustavo Gutierrez, From Peru, he is the father of liberation theology and the book, We Drink From Our Own Wells. And I remember standing in this little tiny white rural church in Mount Airy, Maryland, and trying to articulate at 15 or 16 years of age to an adult community there why I thought God cared so deeply for the poor. And see, Gustavo Gutierrez has received pushback over the fullness of his life. Because when he says God has a preferential option for the poor, blessed are the poor. People say to him, what makes the poor any more important to God than the rich? Listen to his words. God has a preferential option for the poor, not because they are better than others morally or religiously, but because they are poor and living in an inhumane condition that is contrary to God's will. God blesses in the places we are most broken. In your poverty of heart is the place where God's mercy is deepest. In the places in this world where a child tours for six months singing so that somebody would remember to feed them. God blesses, not because God condones poverty, not because God loves somebody more than another, but because God's will is for a fullness of life for all. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus starts with the Beatitudes. He moves then to this love your enemies, 32, he gets really clear. Jesus says, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Why wouldn't you love them if they love you back? (laughs) If you do good to those who do good to you, you already got your reward. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again, but love your enemies. Do good. And expect nothing in return, and your reward will be great, for you will be children of the Most High. Do we want Jesus' new way of being in relationship one with another? The key verse for today's preaching comes from Luke 6, 36. And most of the time we start it right at 38. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down and shaken together, running over will be put into your lap for the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Now, in order to understand this, 
We have to understand ancient agriculture. In a field, if I was a hired laborer, for someone who owned the property, I would be paid a wage for the hours that I worked. So it would not matter how full my bucket was because I was being paid by the hour. But if I was Ruth and Naomi, the widows, the orphans, the outcast, how much fit in my bucket would truly matter? An Old Testament agricultural context after the hired hands had gathered the harvest and been paid their hourly wage. Widows and orphans and those who are outcasts could glean. Raise your hand if you've heard of gleaning. And gleaning means that you got the corner edges of the field because most of the hired hands were just paid by the hour. So who goes all the way out to the edge of the row? Just stay in the middle. So there was this provision in Deuteronomy 15. We don't have time to look at it. But God actually says to the people of Israel, you have to leave the edges. You have to let those who are poorest glean from your leftovers at the very least. And so in this passage, it's literally again speaking about someone who's vulnerable. Give. And it will be as if you were given that one day to glean on a field that had already been picked, and you're going to press down what's in your bucket. Why? Why are you going to press it down? So you can put more in your bucket. And then you're going to shake your bucket. Why are you going to shake your bucket? Get all those selfish air holes out of us. Those places we leave big spaces hidden for ourselves. that Somebody else can't take it. Shake that bucket. And then it's going to run over into your lap. The measure with which you give, the fullness of that bucket that you come home to your hungry family will be the measure with which you receive. And many times we preach this passage in worship about giving. You give a dime to God as a tithe, he'll give you $100 later. Press it down, and the measure with which you give is the measure with which God will give you. But we forget that it comes in this context of the Beatitudes. And actually, verse 37, forgive and it will be, give, and it will be given to you. I want to close because I'm not preaching a full sermon today. I think there's two things that keep us from really giving. Our tithe financially to the church, our heart to those who have hurt us, our time. The first is our selfishness. We look at our lives and we say, I can't, I can't afford to, God. I can't, I can't give that. It makes me too vulnerable. Part of the process of giving is learning to depend on the one who gave you the field to begin with. I think the second thing that often stands in our way is grief after we give. Have you ever given someone, maybe given a gift and afterwards you thought, ooh, I kind of got impetuous and just gave away what maybe I shouldn't have given away. Grief after having given. Scripture tells us that God loves a cheerful giver. I read this scripture and I thought... (laughs) I thought, Lord, this is one of those that I think I've figured out. Raise your hand if you ever are arrogant enough to read Scripture and be like, yeah, I got that one, God. I'm going to skip that passage, right? I've already applied that to my life. You know what God said to me? God said, what about when you give them your heart, Jen, and they walk away? What about when you make yourself vulnerable and they accuse you? What about when you love them and they don't love you back? What about when you give them all that you have and they decide it's better somewhere else? Do you have grief then? Or do you give because it was mine first to give? Love your enemies. Judge not lest you be judged. Condemn not lest you be condemned. Give. And the measure with which you give is the measure with which it will be 